Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. We're doing a quick video. We've got a bit of a checklist here. This is actually really awesome. So if you're gonna book the vehicle in, if you're a regular client and you're doing a lot of your own sort of servicing on your pride and joy and just bring in for a few jobs once a year or two, it's good to have a checklist like that for exactly what you want. Right now, we're doing a front diff oil change. So we're gonna give you a little bit of information. Um, We've removed this little side plate to get access to the diff. We're gonna crack the filler plug at the top there first, middle of the picture. That's not usually a problem. And the bottom one, if they haven't, if they've been over tightened, that can be a problem, but this won't be. We're gonna take, loosen off these two plugs. Okay, so lucky I've got an assistant here. Trying to get out the assistant's way, mate. He's saying, he's kind of signaling me, get out of the way. You're making me awkward because, you know, you're in my way and I'm going to slam you with the breaker bar as soon as, uh, right, as soon as it comes undone. All right, let's uh, get those plugs out, let the oil dry. All right, so a few tips, obviously, yep, we've got the plugs out, we've drained the oil, we've refilled the oil. Um, key tips, put your plug in here at the bottom before you refill it. Um, replace the washer and or plug if you if there's any damage or evidence of any leaking. The copper washers, they normally go black if there's leaking. Don't hit the plug with a hammer. Use a torque wrench. We're in about the 60, 65 Newton meters is the go on these plugs and you won't have any problems. Only time there's problems is when people don't use the right tools. The right torque settings, usually they're over tightened. Top plug, not usually a problem. Don't forget to put that back in once you've topped it up to the correct level. And that's with it just slightly overflowing is the correct level. Once you're all finished up, give it a spray with some brake cleaner and get it all cleaned up. This is not bad, but it could probably do a little bit more. And then we'll put this guard back on to protect the diff as it was designed to do. Bada bing. What are we gonna do next? Rear diff. Okay, over at the rear diff. Uh, what does it say here? It says, LSD oil only, right, okay. So you gotta make sure you use LSD oil for any LSD. Usually L using LSD oil in non-LSDs is usually okay. You just gotta be careful, you know. Like I said, ARB don't like that LSD additive in their lockers, so try and avoid that in case there's any truth to that being the cause of the problem. So crack them both loose, 24 mil. Uh, I don't know if I told you, um, it's a 10 mil hex on the front diff. I don't know if I told you that 10 mil. We've got a quality German one. We've got other videos on changing diff oils. Just thought I'd do another one because this one might be quicker and have more or different information. We get the filler plug out first. That's that one. That allows the air to go in so the oil can come out when we drain the oil out. So we're gonna remove the bottom plug now and let that oil drain, clean the magnet on the drain plug. It's got a magnet there to catch the metal from the wear. We're going to uh, get the plug out, drain the oil. That's what we're in the process of happening right now. And once that happens, we'll fill it up again and butter bing. Oh, look at that oil, beautiful looking stuff. Best to bring it out, clean like that, as prevention rather than when it gets dirty. Beautiful. Mm. Okay, right, so the rear diff oil has been dropped, drained, magnet clean, plugs put back in. Not going to worry about torque settings too much on those in the industry for decades. Usually you don't use a torque wrench on it. Some people leave them loose, some people over tighten them, but it's pretty easy to get it about right. If you're not sure, go ahead and look up the torque settings. You'll find they're about 50 Newton meters on these steel plugs and housings. Um, and it's always wise to have a larger size drum like a 20 litre drum at least with a pump so that what you can do is have a setup like this rather than trying to squeeze in those silly little bottles they just create a lot of extra work small pump bottles you'll be there forever small you know just 20 litres and a pump guys is going to help you get that done um, and that's a butter bing butter boom when it starts overflowing at this hole here we stop pumping let the excess flow out now on some vehicles, the ve the vehicle does, the level needs to be set so that, because you know, maybe they made a mistake mounting the diff on the wrong angle and they've had some issues. See it's starting to come out there now, so 
pretty well maybe one more pump just to demonstrate and when we you can see it's running out when we pull this filler out carefully it'll start running out more and it doesn't matter if the excess runs out you can let it flow for a minute because it's only meant to be uh, but there's not much there you can see that's spot on perfect and that's how we roll again nip that one up and uh, give it a clean up now perform all these as always you only perform these repairs at your own risk um, you know you're not qualified and you probably don't need to be qualified and it's not that hard to do it right we give you the information here for free but you know don't come crying to me if you forgot to do your plugs up that's your problem okay bada bing bada boom just because you watch this part of the video or this video doesn't mean you know everything and you can go and do everything watch all the videos and you still don't know everything okay so transfer case different oil uh, look it up use the book use the look up thing in the shop whatever I'm not going to go into what oil um, right take the filler plug out same deal it's just like a diff drain plug drain it out once it's drained don't over tighten these ones they're just alloy so there's plenty of thread there the plugs only going to be tight and tight enough I think this torque spec is it a bit lower on the alloy is it 39 or something maybe I think the metal diffs are 49, but you know, it's about that, right? 40, 50, you know, that's why I go by feel. I've done it for decades, never had a problem. It's just the front diff I want to use the torque wrench on that drain plug, because when they're over tightened, they are a problem. They're the only one, it's all caused by over tightening, but when they're over tightened, they are a problem. Now we've got a bit of oil around here. We're just going to have a bit of a look at and work out what's going on and if it's a concern or not. So. It's going to always go forward when you've got an oil leak because the air pushes everything backwards. So the pan, the auto pan, there's, it's a bit damp. It is a bit damp. So, you know, this vehicle, I think it's only done 150 or so thousand Ks. I don't think it's even reached 200,000. So this is highly unlike a Toyota. So why do things like this happen? I'll tell you what, just about all the time when it's a Toyota and things like this happen, it's because somebody's touched it, right? So let's look at the gasket. I've got to be quite honest here, and the gasket does look quite original as far as the genuine, you know, type of gasket, not that crappy one, but I can see a bit of a split there. You see that? Is that because it's been over tightened, or is that part of the moulding of the gasket? Because here there's a bit of a bump in the moulding. So it looks like a genuine gasket, but I think someone's had it off. So we go up here and have a look and see what we can see. What can we see? We're looking for any evidence of it. That it's been messed around with by someone. Okay. Hmm. Let's go and have a look up here. See that red stuff there? You reckon that's Toyota that did that? That put a bit of red stuff? Oh, I don't think so. Uh uh. So, uh, even though it's not bad, it's not really a leak, it's a bit untidy. And there's something else going on here too, we'll get to that. But it's a bit untidy to the point that because it's untidy and the kilometres is that, and you know, the way this owner looks after the vehicle, he's not going to like looking at that, right? He's not liking it. And this is a lot of grease from greasing the drive shaft. That's all right. Like I said, I prefer a bit of mess there and know it's been done than, um, you know, than being all dry and <laughs> all clean and hasn't been lubricated. Now, we've got the other, we'll say usual, you know, it's the usual comp on some cars, small percentage, but we've talked about it before. You can see the weep of oil at that join there and in another video we said oh you know maybe you can whack a bit of rtv over it you know without thinking about it too much because it's barely a leak but although you know see there there is a drip there so if there's a drip if it drips then it's a leak but it is very minor the oil level is not going to be lowering like that that's obviously not transmission oil that's transfer case oil that means it's coming out of the front seal of the transfer case. So the transfer case, to unbolt that, you undo these bolts here and the two separate. So the front seal's probably got the slightest weep leak. It all goes to the bottom and it comes out there. Looks worse than what it is. It's going to be quite a large job to remove the transfer case. Um, to Well, not too bad maybe, but it is a large job to do that and, re and replace that seal. And obviously remove it, confirm and replace the seal as required um, very rare and not usually a bad leak but something to be considered so there is a bit of something going on here uh, i'm not too worried about it uh, i'll talk to the client about whether we're gonna what we're gonna do with that oil leak and this we bit a couple of oil weeps i'm gonna call them weeps a bit more of that red evidence at this side of the um 
at the pan there, see? So if it was clean and used clean and dry as per Toyota recommendation and the torque spec four and a half Newton meters, then it'd be like factory clean. But you know, they obviously haven't done that. We might put a tool on them and just give the bolts a bit of a nip and see if that stops it. But the fact that that red stuff's in there, and you know what I mean? You see what I'm looking at there? See that red stuff there? That ain't Toyota. And Toyotas don't have pans leak like that. Anyway, let's work out what we're doing and uh, continue the works on this vehicle. Well, it's one of the other things we're doing on this job, and I'm sure a lot of people will want a bit of information on these rear brake shoes. Part of this service, we're checking that these are the rear handbrake shoes on the rear of a Prado 120s and 150s all the way through for the last couple of decades, basically. And a lot of other cars are very similar. So these are in very good condition. There's still plenty of meat there, which is awesome. They don't need to be changed and they are quite clean. You wanna make sure you clean these when you can after off-roading. These are extremely clean. I'm very impressed with the cleanliness. And um, Pete, you know this is your vehicle. Very impressed with how well it's been looked after and how clean everything is. But what we're gonna do, we're just gonna give it, there's a couple things you can do here. You can use, like we use the Kenco heavy duty uh, degrease it. It's a water-based product. You can use that diluted correctly spray it on hit it with a pressure washer wash it off blow it dry Or if you want you can just use you know El Cheapo uh, brake cleaner product and literally Give it a bit of a you know, and there's not much it's gonna there's not much to clean to be quite honest because They are so clean, but we're just gonna give it a bit of a clean anyway, you know uh, Because that's how we roll a bit of a blow dry hard to show you whatever but I don't need to show you too much right and the face of the hub I want to clean as well that's right I do right and all the mess goes down there in the bottom lovely stuff isn't it right so and the good thing about brake cleaner is you don't need to blow it dry it'll just evaporate and dry itself up um, this job once this is dry complete and we'll get the rotor back on now um, give you a little bit more information while we're at it pretty straightforward to get off now to get to check these rear brake shoes you do need to take the whole rear caliper off including the mounting bracket okay so you don't need to take the caliper off the bracket like we normally do for pads undoing those bolts leave that sealed it's remove the whole bracket the other two bolts you'll figure it out you know again do these repairs at your own risk just because I've shown you some little tips and tricks doesn't mean you know everything how to do the whole job safely so if you do know and you find this helpful Remember to give us a thumbs up for the information and uh, subscribe, turn the bell on and we'll just keep showing you a few jobs. This is a bit of a mixed video, right? We've got other videos on removing and refitting these shoes and they're quite terrible because I don't profess to be the expert on it. They're very hard. To you see the clips there, you've got that hole to walk through. There's, there's not a lot of room to work with. They are, and to get to these springs, they're a real pain. You know, we get the job done, no problem. Um, but. You know they are quite painful and if you do a lot you get better at it and I don't want to get better at it I don't want to do a lot so have a look at the video see look when we did the video I think I had an assistant here and we're having a bit of a muck around and a laugh so we weren't trying too hard we we're probably even trying to make it look hard you know but uh, anyway let's maybe on the other side I'll show you a bit more about how to get the rotor off now you can have a bit of rust here that causes the rotor the disc rotor to stick and it's a bit hard to get off so a bit of a tap with a hammer don't hit the studs might crack that loose you can spray some CRC on here if you like we haven't done that you can see the marks where we've slid it off so not too bad and just gentle taps with a hammer in places that are safe not on the working surface of the disc rotor gentle tap turn it gentle tap we may demonstrate with the other side all depends how much time we've got bada bing hope you're getting something out of this one here we are we're getting the driver's side off now so we've got the caliper off same deal we don't need to show you that it's probably in another video or something anyway that's why i say watch all the videos it's one piece of the million piece jigsaw puzzle now traditional ways people remove this is not a drum brake it's a disc brake but it's like got a drum as well with the shoes and the traditional way is you can get some screws and that on some rotors and they thread into these little threads here and that'll uh, push off that's one way you can do it but you know it doesn't always work depending how badly stuck they are right it's a bit like using the ball joint spread or popper out or a whatever it doesn't always work something you know if you've got a good one and yeah, maybe but you know the old tap 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 is the traditional way so traditional way to move these rotors could you please demonstrate I've got an assistant here could 
Because what happens is, and this one's really hard to turn, but um, what happens, see that we've already got the movement, but what happens, the rust and that, that's it. So that's cracked loose. I'd put my money on if you grab the rotor here and give it a wiggle. It should move a little bit, yeah. But what we need to do is turn it while we do it. So you can do that, you can turn it and wiggle it. Careful you don't do your fingers and all that. Don't hit any of the stuff with that hammer. The other thing you can do that sometimes is a bit easier if you're left-handed, <laughs> is get the hammer. What I like to do, now you can't hit the uh, this braking surface, as I said, but just on the corner of the rotor there, really carefully. Right, just on that corner, kind of like, like literally right there, right? And it's not going to damage any of the braking surface. Gentle taps and then turn it a little bit. Sometimes you've got to put the uh, hammer down and make sure you've got a drone tray of some sort to seal the dust. There's a lot of brake dust and stuff going to be falling out and in the air. So you should probably wear your proper P2 masks when you're doing these sorts of jobs. Um, for sort of fine small particles and things never work out for you in videos when you want to do it. And you want to swear and carry on but um, you get that. Anyway, let's have a look in behind here, right? Okay, having a bit of a look around. Alright, we're going to see this one, it's got a locker, L-O-K-K-A, so therefore makes it really hard to turn the rotor. So, so you just turn it, you look for that, that's it, use the big screwdriver to lever it to turn it, and, you, and you're on the studs for, you, you don't go on the start of the studs, it's not going to damage those threads. Alright, gentle taps and turning is the way to do it, guys. It's just a little bit stuck here, the resistance. As I said, you can spray CRC if you like, but we're sort of giving you some examples of some ways you can, uh, different ways to do things. And the tapping generally works better than the spraying. It just sort of makes a fair bit of a mess. The key is you've got to make sure you keep it square. You've got to make sure you keep it square. Now, let's have a look here. If you see it sticking, it's, it's in more here and out more there. You've got the whole thing. I'm not saying this is or isn't, but if it gets unsquare, that's where it's going to grip up on those shoes that are inside behind here and risk pulling those and damaging the clips as well. So you've got to get it round to the area that needs help most. Anyway, we're going to get on with it. It's easy when we haven't got cameras in the way and I'm standing in the way, sorry mate. And we'll, uh, we'll get these off. Hopefully that's helped. Okay, this one on the driver's side, it's been a bit of a pain to get off. And what your main problem is, it wasn't stuck too bad on this area here. It was mainly the shoes were up nice and firm, which I'm surprised they're not worn more, so that's really good. We're going to do a little bit more cleaning here, but um, obviously we're removing them just to check the thickness of the handbrake shoes as per the request from the customer, because we don't do that every service, you know, usually they're fine, but you know, sometimes they need to be checked. It's not a concern, if they go metal to metal, your handbrake's still going to work, it's going to get screechy, then you're going to get a new set. It's a big job anyway, you might as well then just change the shoes, it's not a safety thing either really. You know, if they go, if these go metal to metal, it's not your main brakes, it's just your handbrake, okay? If these were to wear through, uh, you're not driving with these on, you know, you're going to hear a bit more of a squeak, you're going to need adjustment, it's going to get pulled apart, you're going to get new shoes and probably new rotors maybe, or you could, yeah, whatever, you know, like it's not a, it's not a big deal, I'm just trying to show you, if you can't get them off, then through this hole, you come to the adjustment. That's what we had to do on this one. There's the adjuster there. Now, I'm not gonna tell you which way you gotta turn it, because it depends what side of the car, and if anyone's worked on it before, if they turn this around, because it can go either way, right? That, that adjuster there. So if you can, you can look through the hole and turn the wheel so you can see the thread and try and work out which way to turn it, or you just get in here with your screwdriver so you can see the teeth there, and you turn it until it stops if it goes more than three turns. Did you get that? Turn it till it stops if it goes more than three turns. So if it goes three turns, then try and get the wheel off. It's either gonna be because you loosened it, uh, not the wheel, the, the rotor, right? You then try and get it off. If you turn it a two or three or four turns and it stops turning, it's probably because you tightened it and then you grab the rotor and it's just gonna be really tight and not move. You know you've tightened it. So then you need to know you need to back it off another three or four turns, whatever you just did, plus an extra couple should be enough to get it off. Anyway, that's the go. It'll get caught up on the shoes, and if you force it, if you try and force these off, you will then pull these clips, the retaining clips that are in hidden behind there that are really hard to get to, and yep, you won't be happy. So make sure working on these, just have a check and make sure everything there looks okay. You can spin the, you can spin this around, put this hole, and bring it around up to here. That's what we're gonna do and check these. 
before we put it back together. But just trying to help guys, if they get a bit stuck, sometimes it can be stuck on this surface here, but mm, not always. Sometimes it just needs the adjustment. Here, backed off a little bit, and that's how you adjust these shoes, not necessarily from the cable. The cable adjustment can do with some adjusting if it's stretched, but uh, from where here, you adjust it here, and if you leave them over adjusted, they're gonna wear out in the mud and everything. I've talked to you about that before. Anyway, a little bit of uh, transmission information for those people that wanna know a little bit about the automatic transmission and what's inside there when you remove the transmission pan. Okay, so that's your filter there in the middle. Okay, these little things, they're solenoids, electronic solenoids. That's why there's wires that go to them. There's a number of those. Um, in some brands of transmission, that's what plays up and causes your problems. Um, all we're doing with this one is cleaning up the mess that was provided by the previous person working on it, a new gasket, and the correct torque settings to make sure there's no oil leaks, weeps, or any question about it. But I would like to say the transmission pan should not be moved, shouldn't be removed. We've got a number of vehicles that are you know, 8, 10, 12, 15 years old, uh, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400,000 Ks. These pan gaskets don't leak. There's no need to change this filter. It does not stop filtering. It doesn't become blocked. Do you want to have a quick look before? I don't want to get oiled, but can you see in the middle there? It's white and clear. You're wasting your time and your money if you remove this pan. It's time, it's a gasket, it's a filter. It's just not needed. What matters is clean oil. You can see this one's fairly clean. It's had some oil changes before. It's a decent color. Um, I'm not saying they need oil changes. These transmissions without any maintenance, they just seem to be bulletproof and last forever. But of course, engine, not engine, forget that word, D delete that one out, right? Oil, transmission oil, it's the lifeblood, it's the lubrication, it's what's gonna protect all your components. Like the engine is what I was going to say. See, my mouth went ahead and was catching up with my brain, what it had land next. The engine oil is the lifeblood of the engine. It's much more important to change because of the contaminants. This doesn't get the contaminants. If you don't drive it right and you heat it up and you cook the oil, then it's going to be more important. But if you drive it right, how do you drive it right? Well, watch our other videos. It's all described. There's plenty of videos there. We've got people complaining that there's too many videos. Well, don't watch them, you know, people want more, okay? Make a plan of how to catch up. But if you want to catch up and have the information, you do need to catch up. You need to watch at least two a day. And um, as they come through, one or two a day, you need to watch them as it happens. Uh, maybe once a week, you're gonna watch seven or 10, you know, fill in a couple of hours. So anyway, guys, that's what the transmission looks like. Don't take it off, okay? We're just taking it off to return it back to the original factory condition because it had a slight weep there and you know we saw some cracks in the sides of the gasket. Bada bing, that's your transmission information. It may be included in a separate video, but it's in another video. That's why you just gotta watch all the videos all the way through. They go off topic. This one's a bit of a mixed information, service and repairs type video. Um, if you have got something out of it, please give us a thumbs up so we know we're doing the right thing. And if you haven't already, subscribe, turn the bell on. We've got more information like this coming your way. Right, guys, just wanted to show you. This is the minimum amount of cleanliness you need on the auto pan before you replace the pan. Okay, so the magnets, there's five magnets, four magnets, I can't count. Four magnets sitting there. Clean those, replace those, clean the pan. Make sure the gasket, brand new, genuine like that. But don't take it off, I told you. Just don't take it off and you won't have to deal with this. Worst case scenario, this is the reason why you'd be taking this off, right? It gets really old, it gets deteriorated, and it starts to get a bit of a weep and you want to change it, then this is what's going to have to happen. We don't even have to do this in the Prada Hospital, okay? So, stay subscribed, and when it happens, and we need to, we'll do a more detailed video on it for you. But as far as I can remember, I haven't checked yet, the torque setting's four and a half newton meters, so, we're going to place this up on the transmission now. It's nice and clean. Bang, cleanly in one hit. I'm going to get these started, hold it in place, get no oil on any of these surfaces, nice and clean. And we're going to nip it up in many passes to four and a half newton meters. And it's never going to leak again. All right, so it's back up in place. We've just very lightly put the bolts in place. And yeah, they're just, some of them had barely just started. Don't worry about that. We haven't finished. 
just showing you and it might get a little bit dirty again and it's only on the outside not the inside you know a few fingerprints you're touching dirty things as well even though we cleaned all the bolts scrubbed all the bolts and everything um, the key thing is to not over tighten them okay remember the torque setting I said go double check it but I reckon it's four and a half newton meters I'm gonna go check it now and we're gonna get them all nice and evenly and many passes and not bend the pan and there's lots of bolts in these which is really good really almost impossible to bend the pan and we're going to nip them all up probably to four and a half newton meters and put the oil back in and set the level and then you've got to watch another video for more details